Hello everyone, I'm Deadline reporter Mac Robar and welcome back to The Process. Today we have a pair of collaborators from HBO's acclaimed dark comedy Barry, which recently came to a close after four seasons. Here for a conversation with makeup department head Corey Castellano is the Emmy nominee known for his role as Fuchs, Steven Root. <laughs> Uh, hey folks, this is uh, Stephen Root of uh, the HBO show Barry, and I have the man who makes that show fantastic with all his great work, because uh, I get beat up a lot on this show, and the man uh, that, that uh, helps me achieve that is right here, Cora Castellano. How are you, bud? Hey, how's it going? Uh, very, very good. Um, well, the powers that be want me to ask you, uh, to start off with a, uh, a couple of things from Barry. I know, uh, I think it would be good to start off with, you've done some aug beard augmenting for several people on this show, uh, me included. <laughs> but I want you to start with uh, Henry Winkler's character, because I know he, he had to have a couple of big augmentations. Can you talk about that for a second? Sure. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of interesting. Uh, Henry has a, a mild allergy and a huge aversion to uh, any kind of uh, adhesives. So he tried really hard and grew out uh, his, his beard as much as he could uh, for the post uh, post time jump episodes of Barry. And um, we had to go in and actually augment that by laying hair into his hair to, to make it a little bit fuller uh, initially until it grew all the way in. Um, tricky, but not impossible. Then cut to after we'd wrapped and Bill and well, we decided we needed to come back and, and, uh, add some, some material. Um, we had to actually have a custom beard fabricated because Henry had shaved and moved on to other. Oh, things. that's so Henry. So <laughs> <laughs> very but uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool. We had a, an amazing beard done. And, yeah, it looked uh, fantastic. You know, we saw it in episode, I think six. I think yeah, I think we saw it yeah. uh, in six. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, it was a uh, you know wonderful handmade. Uh, you know, hairs tied one at a time in there to to, to get gorgeous. that look. So. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, I didn't ever have anything that extensive to do, although we had to do some augmentation for the very final scene I ever shot in Barry, which was the car scene. Um, uh, my beard had been a little longer about a month before. I'd done another project, and uh, so you had to get me a little a little hairier here around the cheeks, as I recall. <laughs> but it looked, yeah, uh, it yeah. looked perfect. It looked uh, like yesterday. It was gorgeous. Uh, is there anybody else uh, that you did augmentation on besides Henry and myself? Um, uh, there were there were a few others here and there that, that but we were uh, the main ones. That we, yeah, yeah. You, you you guys were the 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 the, the biggest focal points. So, uh, for yeah. Sure. And before we get to um, <laughs> the big transformation for uh, Fuchs' character, I want to talk about. Um, uh, getting uh, beat up makeup. Uh, and that I've done since the very first episode of the show and throughout all the seasons. Uh, can you remember the first time we worked together on uh, on facial beat up makeup? Ooh. Uh, I can't remember the first time, but... Uh, but I, I know that uh, initially, for the, for the most part, it was uh, kind of what we did on Bill, where it's highlight and shadow and color and, and that sort of thing, or small little floating appliances right. uh, or transfer type things um, that just, you know, just added, you know, a, a little bit of, you know, weathering and, you know, falling down and getting getting knocked about kind of, kind of right. like uh, – but then uh, we, we, we went for it on this, uh, on this last season. We sure did.
there is there is a scene where uh, I get beat up in prison, uh, and Corey has has laid on about three different sets of makeup on that. Talk about talk about that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I remember uh, getting the, uh, the the script for that, and uh, the the note that I got from uh, from Bill was that he he wanted it to be uh, somewhere between horrific and pitiful. Uh, and look like Quasimodo, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and and it did. And, you know, I, I talked <laughs> to you, and, and you, uh, you 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 were down to to do whatever uh, was was right for the story, and um, you know, basically, yeah, it was a uh, I think three three or four pieces. We had uh, the swollen shut eye, the kind of the the lump on the yeah. cheek uh, over here, and I think we did a a dental thing that kind of distorted your jaw a little yeah, bit. Yeah, to pull, uh, push little, that out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I remember the, the uh, I, I think one eye, you had closed one eye, correct? And then layered yeah, over we, that. we taped an eye, put that appliance right on yeah. there, and uh, and uh, you, uh, you you totally sold that look. <laughs> uh, and, and that was, but that, you know, that was an important thing because that was kind of the, the, the catalyst. That's where, you know, uh, the transformation into the Raven starts, you know, that's, that's where, where Fuchs gets that. Absolutely. Idea. That, that very scene, it started because as soon as he gets, um, uh, respect from the people in the prison, that's when he actually becomes the Raven. Although he'd been given that name as almost a joke before that. Yeah, it was cool. Now, how did you, I mean, did you, um, I, I love the, you know, watching, I'm getting to watch the episodes back you know that that little nuance of of, uh, of Fuchs recognizing that moment that this was his, you know his 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 uh, uh, moment to shine, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I love the, the the nuance that that you you threw in there. What um, what was kind of running through your head in in that uh, in that moment? Well, as I entered that place. Um, uh, I don't think that he even realized how much uh, he was going to be beaten for for this trying to uh, find out where Barry is, and he really didn't know. <laughs> so his respect kind of came from nowhere. But uh, as as he walked in and and finally sat down and saw the respect that everybody in that room had given him by not eating until he was eating. Um, I knew uh, uh, that it wasn't going to be a, a, a big gesture to, to s sell that. But I think what did help me was your, your, your layover in that eye, because what you're looking at then is just this eye over here, slightly shifting. And I start to smile and they cut. And that's yeah. and that's all you needed to show the respect of that whole room. Uh, so I, I think the layover on that eye and just being able to see one eye was really important to that. Very cool. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think we have to go into at that point. Uh, once once he has been in prison for a while, obviously he gets tatted up. Oh, yeah. As far as the the overall design process goes, um, you know, basically, I kind of uh, I, I took a little bit of inspiration from uh, a, a friend of mine, a guy I know uh, who was in the military, a smaller guy about my size, who uh, full sleeves, lots of tattoos, and uh, I remember talking to him about them one time, and he said, "Well, they were all camouflage. It was to make people think I was a badass." But I'm really not. I'm just a you know nice guy, hmm. and um, it kind of occurred to me that that uh, that was that might have been a little bit of uh, you know Fuchs mindset that that he wanted to to have this 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 persona this presence that he was embracing, and um, you know so we I, I looked for uh, ideas that would kind of lean into you know a, a, a harder scarier look 
you know, we have the wolf, the dire wolf, uh, the grim reaper, uh, angel of death, uh, you know, things like that. Lots of uh, uh, girls with guns, skulls, of course, the, the, you know, the and, raven. And small things like that bullseye that we ended up with. The, the bullseye was... Right. Yeah, I, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd printed up the bullseye and uh, yeah, I was like, ah, I don't know where we can do this. And, and I think it was you. You're like, hey, you know, <laughs> put it on the back of my neck. This is this is Fuke's life. You know, this yeah. is, uh, this is the, 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 you know, the born to lose moment without saying born to lose. And uh, so, you know, we had that. We had, uh, you know, the, the raven claws on the hands. And a huge so, ra raven, uh, a huge winged raven right here. That was a big yeah. piece, right? Was that, yeah, and that was, was that harder to do? It was, yeah. Doing uh, anything that's that's contoured is is tricky, uh, you know, naturally. But uh, you know, it, it was, uh, and I think we uh, more than once we had to, to uh, reapply uh, a couple times to get it to to lay just right in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but you know, getting that design and having it kind of wrap your neck the way that it did and always be front and center uh, was was pretty important. I loved I loved the fact that you put you put a couple of skulls down below it on either side of the wings, which which you said you didn't really want to see the majority of the skulls, just the top of them, which was scarier than anything else. I thought I thought that was a fantastic idea. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of that stuff you don't have to 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 beat people over the head as long as they 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 can sense it it sells it, you know, cause it's, uh, you know, it kind of speaks to, uh, you know, the, the, the Raven, not Fuchs, but the Raven, you know, he's, right. uh, you know, he, 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 does, he doesn't need to put everything on display. It's right. Kind of there. Right. Yay. Wow. Look at what the cat brought in to the house. All right. Wow. So good to see you. What the fuck happened to you? I found myself. In a tattoo parlor? No. Hank, my body tells the story of my journey. Initially, I went through a gauntlet of pain, but that pain turned into pleasure. Pleasure manifested. Yeah, 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 well. Oh, so these are the guys, huh? Welcome, guys. Yep. We are at your service. I found it just completely easy to get these things on the way you designed them. They were uh, wetted, put on, pressed, uh, and then they were there. It was such an easy process. Can you talk about the process? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, a lot of us do a, a similar uh, format, but basically uh, we use a special printing process, uh, print the, the tattoo designs in reverse uh, on a, a, what we call a water slide paper, uh, similar to what they used to use for uh, Cracker Jacks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you yeah, know, but obviously much larger and, you know, much more uh, uh, essentially realistic. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just uh, put them on and, and do a little water transfer and maybe clean up an edge or two. The, the but, technology seemed a lot uh, easier than it had been in years before. What's the difference? Uh, one of the, the two techniques that, that were uh, prevalent when I, uh, when I was first starting doing this stuff uh, would be to uh, to do like an, an alcohol type transfer, similar uh, process, a thinner paper with a, a damp alcohol pad, and you would kind of blot that in, and it would transfer, but it it usually bled and ran funny. Uh, or to actually have you know uh, big uh, stamps, like the old stamp pad stamps, uh, produced and actually put those on, and then hand paint everything in. Uh, so you 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 have been in the chair for days, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure I would have, because these were so easy, and 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 I, I remember at one point you saying probably um, in prison there wouldn't be color on this one tattoo. Can you speak to that? Yeah, um, generally speaking, uh, with with uh, prison tattoos, uh, since they're not really supposed to be doing that kind of thing, but it happens anyway. Um, they, uh, they, they don't have access to, to colored inks. It's not like you can go to your local tattoo artist and, you know, have a, have a sunset done. Uh, they, they have, uh, you know, blacks and, and blues and, and that's pretty much it. Right. And, uh, yeah, but we decided that, uh, that it would be that, that little pop of color 
would would do a couple of things. It would it would obviously set the tattoo off, but somehow this guy had enough juice to get red ink for his tattoo. Right. Yeah, and, and that, that kind of says, you know, maybe this guy is, is kind of a kingpin in there. So it, it, it kind of made sense and, and you know, you were on board with it. So absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we had a big shootout scene uh, at one point, and uh, I know you did a lot of blood on people. Uh, was there anything special you did in in that scene? Uh, there, there were there were a lot of bullet wounds. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the aftermath of a of a grenade. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we uh, that was our uh, our Saving Private Ryan moment. I think uh, <laughs> <laughs> there there was a, a this uh, amazing uh, uh, dolly shot that uh, that kind of hit all the high points and we had, uh, you know, shot out eyes, uh, guts hanging out, uh, you know, just massive bullet wounds. Uh, a little bit of that. You have in a comedy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of, lot of blood. We, we yeah, had yeah. several gallons of blood. Sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, moving away from the main characters in the show, is there, is there a favorite you had that you did on uh, a background person? Oh, that's a good question. Um, a, a lot of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Chechens and uh, a, a lot of the, the, uh, uh, the Noho ball uh, gang guys. Cause yeah. we got to play with some different styles of tattoos uh, you know, we got to do some Asian tattoos, the Russian tattoos, uh, Great. that sort of thing. And then do, uh, you know, uh, playing with like the facial hair and just really create some, some visual texture and, and, uh, you know, get, uh, get, get some good character looks in there to kind of round things out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you've had <clears throat> very specific training in horror horror film stuff. And I, I, if I'm not wrong, I, I concurrently you were doing some of that while we were doing Barry. Uh, I, I was doing some design work for, for some stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, anything you can reveal? Uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, my, uh, my, my background is, a a lot of, uh, prosthetic work and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah. You know, well, let me let me ask you this. Let me start from the beginning. What what brought you into it? Uh, in into makeup in general, or, or the uh, show? In, in into this kind this kind of of makeup, specialty makeup, the blood, the gore, you know, the whole uh, whole nine yards. Yeah, I uh, yeah for me, getting into makeup in the first place was, uh, wanting to be part of the filmmaking process. You know, I, uh, I, I, I when I, when I learned to do this stuff, I, I kind of learned to think of myself as a filmmaker who does makeup rather than just a makeup guy. And, um, yeah, I was really fortunate to, to train with people who, uh, who, who let me kind of run with a lot of things and, uh, you know, getting into the, the character work and uh, the, the creature work and the prosthetics, that, that sort of stuff, um, really flexes some creative muscles that, that go beyond, you know, just evening out a skin tone and trimming a beard, you know. You, sure. You, uh, you know, you, you get to, uh, you know, add a beard, you get to add bruises, you get to add, you know, zits, whatever it might be. So there's a, there's a, a creativity and a, a problem solving uh, process that, uh, that, that really stretches you. And, uh, you know, I was, I was really fortunate to, uh, to get to do a, a little bit of everything on Barry. It was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, when, when you collaborate, uh, uh, can you speak to who you're collaborating with? Is it a specific director? Is it the producer of the series or the uh, the originator of the series? Who do you who do you usually go to to discuss what's going to happen? It, it's a it's an interesting process because it, it it starts on the written page, you know, whatever the the writers have have uh, have come up with, and then uh, and that gets filtered through the director's vision, right? So that that gives me my 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 basic. Uh, uh, guideline my basic uh, direction to, to go in 
but and as as you know, because you were at ground zero for some some pretty gnarly stuff, you know, I, I it's for me, it's very important that the actor has a voice in what you're doing to to them, to their instrument, basically. Sure. Uh, you know, you you need to be comfortable in you know. Hey, you know, Stephen, I want to I want to glue your eyes shut. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. You know? And you know, of course, you were on board. But sometimes people aren't, so you have to kind of rethink what you're doing. But uh, especially with allergies and and stuff with different people's skin, I would imagine. A- absolutely, you have to be so careful. Like like Henry, for example, you know, you know, okay, we can we can augment your beard, or or when we had to to glue on a fake beard, uh, you know, we have that that ability. But I had to find a glue that he wouldn't have a reaction to. Sure, because it it doesn't make sense to you know torture you guys too much uh, <laughs> so yeah it's a it's no that's great you were right about mr kusno i never should have trusted him and i never should have taken that acting class if i hadn't have tried to understand myself we wouldn't be here i'm sorry fuchs When you first got involved in the show, when you yeah. first, you know, way back in the day, mm-hmm. um, did you have any clue where this was going to go <laughs> and what, what was going to end up? Uh, that, that was going to that it was going to be as big as it as it is. It's interesting that when I started the show, I was a different character. I mean, it was still named Fuchs, but he was a screaming moron uh, throughout the pilot, and that's what we shot, which was fun. It was fun to do. It's fun to see. But uh, you can't start at 11. So um, <laughs> we, we, we took it back down to one where he was just a kind of a bad uncle and, uh, and convincing him and using manipulation, which is uh, the byword for Fuchs is manipulation, um, to, to get uh, Barry to do what he wants him to do. The fact that he has uh, a revenge cycle when Barry doesn't do what he wants him to do that became the center of the character is like you're not doing what i want you to do and you have to do what i want you to do so here's what we're going to do uh and that and that uh, turned into a love-hate relationship with barry that lasted through every season um so did i have an inkling that it would go that way no not 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 a clue and not a clue that uh that <laughs> I would be the focal point of being beaten up in every season. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. It was awfully fun. Um, but, you know, as I, 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 as I advanced in my 60s, it got to be a little harder uh, every season. Uh, but, but you made it so much easier with, uh, with uh, the, the way you didn't keep us in the chair that long. You, you had a beautiful way to work so that uh, everybody was comfortable. Um, if, it, it, if it was taking a while, everybody could relax, just lean their head back and you would do your work. It was, it was a great process. And uh, I, was, I was thrilled to, to go through it with you. Absolutely. Why do you want to talk to the FBI, Mr. Fuchs? They put me in a prison with a guy that wants to kill me. What's that about? That's a common problem for people in prison, Mr. Fuchs. I need protection. We know. What do you mean you know? Word on the street is you and Berkman were besties. Now you're not. Berkman's going down for Janice Moss's murder. Are you coming to us to say there's more? She's just the tip of the iceberg. Are you, uh, are you sad to see uh, Fuchs go? I'm not as sad to see Fuchs go as to see the actors around me go. Um, there's there's a lot of shows where you don't uh, you don't remain close with the actors that you've done, but I, I I feel like I've made you know five or six new best friends on this show, and and I don't feel like they're going anywhere. I don't feel like I I don't. You're a buddy now. You can't get away from me now. So. <laughs> So I, I, I'm more sad that I won't get to see everybody, uh, you know, every other day. Uh, but I'm sure that I will. And I'm sure that we will. 
uh, if not through works, to socially see each other. So um, that made me sadder than actually the character ending. Um, the character was a gift from the gods. You know, there's only a few shows that you get to that are magical, and this one is. The uh, writing is magic. The the casting is magic. The the actors turned out to be magic with each other, and uh, and the directing and the producing were magic. Uh, so it it's it's one of those one of those count count them on your one hand experiences. I hope it was for you as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's definitely. Uh... Uh, one, one of the, the top experiences in my career is uh, it, it, it kind of it goes to what you were saying. It's uh, that, that uh, you know, all of the actors were friends. I mean, you guys all really liked and respected each other. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's I can't tell you how nice it is to, to come into a, a trailer that no matter who walks in, which which actor which you know, if, a, if a producer walks in a director walks in whatever there was no tension everything was just harmonious and and, and for the good of the show i mean all yeah. of us were going towards the good of the show and that's that's what i think is really important that's what makes magic if you're going for that you're not going for you you're not going for anybody else you're going for the good of the whole of the show and I think that's that's what we were all doing, trying to do. Yeah. No, it, it's uh, it, it it comes through. It comes through in in every scene. It came through on set, and and you know, it, it's uh, it's it was an amazing ride. It really was. Well, Corey, I don't, uh, I I can't see that I can glean any more from your incredible <laughs> talent. Uh, so I'm going to let you go. But uh, I I have to tell you what an absolute pleasure it was to work with you. I want to work with you again. Hopefully I want to see you again, whether it's out inside or outside of work. So uh, thank you so much for doing this and, and telling the people uh, uh, what you do uh, and basically your process. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy.